church this morning. Amen. Amen. We're, with them. We're finishing uh, the sermon from last week. And remember last week, uh, just to catch you up to speed, we talked about how socialism and vocalism uh, is in the text in, in Matthew 17 and 1 mm -hmm. uh, through 6. And, and so you see uh, the, the socialism, the gathering of uh, of men uh, at this place. The Bible said Jesus bringing them. He said he takes them up to a place, and we call it Mount Mount uh, to, uh, Transfiguration, but it doesn't say that there's Mount Sinai, Mount Horeb, and there's up on this mountain they they are they are socialized, they're gathered there. And the reason why I say socialism because the church has not been established yet. Uh, Any time you at a place where the church is not established, then that's socialization. Uh, and so they are there, and the Bible says that God, Christ, transfigured himself. Uh, and so while he was there, there in this gathering was Elijah and Moses. And then Jesus transfigured himself. And I made a salient point, I want to make it again, that uh, is indicative to some of the things that we do spiritually that we need to be careful doing, is that when people die, we tend to act as if they've already went to the judgment and already made it to heaven or the other place. Uh -huh. But there's a, there's, there's a teaching in the text that shows that when he transfigured himself, that Moses and Elijah appeared and Peter could see them and they were still in their bodily state. Because Peter identified them. This is the Bible says there appeared unto him Moses and Elijah. And Peter says, Father, it is good that what? That we are all here. He recognized them, and, 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 and which, which, which shows the Bible is awesome. It's still right. When we die, when we decease, we do not go to the final resting place. We go to a waiting place. The Hedean realm, and we either go to paradise, to Taurus, uh, the, 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 the different abodes in this realm, and we wait for the judgment. The corruptible uh, must put on incorruptibility, but the corruptible has not been changed yet. We are not changed until the sounding of the coming of the Lord. And the Bible says, in a twinkling of an eye, immortality shall put on mortality. Moses had put that change yet. He's still with Moses is waiting on the judgment of Christ. Amen. Moses, the great lawgiver, is subject to Christ. And those that live under Moses will be judged by Moses' law. So when folk ask me, was the thief saved on the cross? I tell him, it, the thief didn't live under Christ. Because Christ, uh, those that live under Christ, had not established his church yet. And everyone that died under Moses law are judged by the things according to Moses. Amen. 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 And those that live under Christ are judged by what? Under Christ. Under Christ. And so you see this distance that you have the patriarchal period right there before you. You have the mosaic period right there before you. And you have the coming of Christ where Christ is there and he's there having a conversation. And wouldn't you like to be a fly on the wall here with Moses and Elijah and Christ were talking about? Amen. Amen. I'm just, I mean, and, and then would you have liked to have been in the vocalization of the text there to hear God speak from heaven? Right. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Now, now, now the, text, the Bible says that, that while he yet spake, a, a, a bright light shined about them, a cloud overshadowed them. And there was a voice that came from heaven that said, This is my beloved son. Could you imagine standing there and to hear from heaven, This is. My beloved son. That's not just any voice. That's not just <laughs> And you know, we act like that was just anybody talking. We just read over it real quick. And then the Bible said, This is my beloved son. God said, This is. And the power is, is not only what was said, but who said. And if we understood the text, you turn this down, this is because you know, we, we get old and, and, and when it's dang loud, it gives us headaches, our blood pressure go up, and our sweet eye gout get activated. Amen. Hey, Y'all help me now, we're getting old, you know, and, 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 and so getting shaken and stuff. Amen. Hey, and so when, 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 when God spoke, now I want you to remember this in the text because this is important to, 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 to the last part of the sermon because Peter said something, and that's one thing. Elijah and Moses may have said something. That's another thing. That's the vocalization. But God shouted from heaven. 
This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Well, what made God speak from heaven? God will speak from heaven. God through his word will speak to us when men are talking too much, lying too much, or saying something they ought not be saying. Amen. 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 Peter said it and it calls a response. I believe that God is still speaking from heaven right now. He went to our lives. We get outside of ourselves. Peter said, now this is what Peter said. He said, Master, it is good that we are all here. Mm -hmm. Now listen to this because this caused reaction from heaven. If you knew somebody says it caused reaction from heaven, would that not have your attention? Yeah, Amen. It caused reaction from heaven. You don't want to say what he said. Amen. Am I right? Am I right? You know what? If it made God say something from heaven, and see, we have to get arrogant and bold in our, in our disposition with God, with Christ and our salvation, because God owns salvation. You don't, you don't own salvation. And Peter said, Master, it's good that we are all here. Let us build three churches. It don't matter. Who's the head of the church? Don't matter what they teach. Don't matter about the dispensation of time. Let's still build three tabernacles. And let's build one how Moses see it. One how who? Elijah see it. And we'll build one how you see it. For any church will do. And while he yet spent. God stopped him for station identification and said, this is my son who will die on Calvary's cross and his blood will purchase my church. Acts 20 and verse number 28. But the Bible says, take heed unto yourselves and to the flock which the Holy Ghost have made the overseer that he may feed the church of God. Well, which God is he talking about? The, 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 which he has purchased. Here's, here's the identification. He said, which he has purchased with his own blood. Which God bled. God the Father didn't bleed. God the Holy Spirit didn't bleed. But who bled? God the Son bled on Calvary's cross. And his blood purchased the what? Purchased the church. Are y'all with me so far? He said, I want you to hear the one who purchased the church with his own blood. Hear ye him. My message this morning again is hear ye him. Why? Because he paid for the church. He died to establish the church in Ephesians 5, about verse number 25 to 31. He's coming back again to get his church, not just in the tabernacle. Are you, are you in the church this morning? Are you in the church this morning? Are you in his church? You just in any old church. Are you, are you in Moses' church? What's Moses' church? Fundamentally Baptist sound. In other words, it's that church that, that had to say, we go by the Old Testament and we go by the New Testament. We go by the whole Bible. Are you lying? Because you can't go by the whole Bible. Otherwise, there would be goats and bulls in here this morning and there would be sackcloth and, and there would be meal on the floor and there would be all kinds of stuff going on. But God didn't authorize that type of worship in his church. That's in Moses' church. And God just said, we're not trying to rebuild Moses' church. Why? Because he said, let's build Moses' church. And God said, why he expect? He said, no, hear what Jesus has to say. Amen. And the key part of this text is he said, before, before, going back to John 17, and about verse before, before he said, what he said? Peter had enough good sense that I hope you have this morning. That whatever you do in life, that you put this in front of whatever you do. You remember the book of James, the Bible said, before we said, James chapter 4, the Bible said, before you say you'll do this, you'll do that, you might say it would be what? It may be the Lord's will. We shall do this. Why? Because you don't even know if you're going to be living here tomorrow. And you know, so you can't do nothing unless it's in the will of God. Y'all understand that? You need to say, if it's the Lord's will, we should do this and thus and thus. When you're trying to live outside of God's will, you'll mess yourself up. Guess what? You can't worship God outside of his will. I don't care how good it seems, I don't care how right it seems, I don't care how accurate, how honest Peter felt, Peter needed to ask a simple question. He said, Father, if thou would look at the text, then Peter answered and said unto Jesus, Lord, if it is good for us to be here, if thou what? If thou wilt. Lord, can I get authorization?
organization. Amen. So sometimes when you look for a job, you have to say, Lord, if it be thy will. And many times we'll go right into something without seeking the will of God. You know, I like the fact that when Dr. Weber uh, was running for the assemblyman, she talked to a preacher. She put him in the mix of who she talked to because she was seeking God's will. And, and, and you, know, you, know, you know, some people get happy. And somebody said, well, you run for it? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. She didn't do that. You know what she did? She saw what? The will of God. Is this the will of God? How many of you are seeking the will of God in your life right now? Right here, the will of God. But if it's the Lord's will, and everything you do, you need to seek the will of God. Because when you're in the vein of God, nothing is impossible for you. No, it may be hard, but nothing is impossible for those who seek the will of God and not their will in their life. But somewhere along the line, men have sought their own will, not consult with God, trying to get somewhere. God had put them. God don't want them to be. And they're confused, perplexed as to why they're going through what they're going through. It's because we live outside of the will of God. Watch this. When we worship God, we need to worship God. I want you to write these scriptures down. We need to worship God according to the authorization of God. I know it may not seem like nothing to you, but when I get through with this text, you'll find that it better mean everything to you. Because when you worship God outside of his authorization, you are not worshiping God. Am I right about it? The, the first principle in hermeneutics is that when you say something, you need to have an example, an inference, or a command. When you go to college and you go to your Bible class and we're going to study hermeneutics, basic hermeneutics is that when you say the Bible says something, there must be an example, an inference, or a command to do it. Or it's not what the text is saying, but it's what you're saying. And if you're saying, like Peter was saying, God is screaming from heaven, hear ye him. Hear Jesus. And I don't know about you, but the only thing going to save us is Jesus. Acts chapter 4, verse 11, the Bible says that this is that strong set, ye not by ye builders, which has become the head of the church. He said, neither is there salvation in any other name whereby men can be saved uh, in heaven or in earth. What do you mean? I got to have a name. It's by the authorization or the authority of God. In the name of Jesus, it says, by your authority and by your will. You can't worship God outside of his authority and his will. And Peter had enough sense to say, if it be thy will. When you think about worshiping God, is it according to the will of God or the socialization of men or the vocalization of men? Do you go to church looking for something that make you feel good rather come to church feeling good about doing right and worshiping God according to the will of God. When you begin to worship God, do you look at this, Lord, how will you have me worship? Listen, when the Bible said in the book of Ephesians chapter 5, verse number 19, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing, making a melody to your heart and the God. It is not less for Peter-like mentality to begin to say to themselves, it don't matter, let's just play instrument music. I don't see no big deal with it. It sounds good to put instrument music in the worship service of the Lord. Why? Because the authorization, the authorization gives clearance for what it gives clearance for. Anything else has been declined. When God tells us what to do, he does not have to tell us what not to do. Amen. He said, I want you to speak to yourself how? In psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, sing, sing. Now what did he tell you to do? He told you to sing and make melody work. Now, now, now it's not what's in the text, it's who said the text. Amen. God is saying, I don't want your instrument of music. What I want you to do is sing. And if you make melody, make your melody work. In your heart. In your heart. Now, does God have to tell me in his authorization not to play instrumental music in service? Does God not? Let me go back to the text. Who's speaking in the text? God. God. What is Peter trying to do? Seek his authorization. What's his authorization? Hear ye him. He, because he said, hear ye him, does not mean he have to say, but don't listen to them. The fact that he said, hear ye him, eliminates them. Amen. Because Jesus, I told you what to do. Hear ye him. Eliminates him having to say, don't listen to them. Who are you listening to this morning? Speak to yourself in psalms and hymns and spirit. And even in the church of Christ, we have folk that are sitting around, just uh, aborting in their mind, saying, I don't see the big deal about it. Well, Peter didn't see the big deal about it. And God came out of his lunch break in heaven and shut him down right where he was. Amen. If you better cut that stuff out, amen. God, I can say that. 
I'm going to tell you something. Here's the danger. Here's the danger, church. Yeah. When you worship God improperly, well, let's look at, let's, let's just sit there. Can I, can I go back to the Bible for a minute? Yeah. Let's look at all the things you have to have authorization to do according to the scripture. Number one, we know in order to praise God and sing, we've been authorized to sing and sing only. We know Colossians 3.16 says that we are sons of the spirit of son, that our sons are to teach and to admonish one another. We know the Bible says that in Hebrews 13 and 15 that we make, uh, that, that is with the fruit of our lips, that we offer continuous praise unto God. Let's sing again. Hebrews 2, verse number 9 and 12. Now we see Jesus made a little more than the angels of heaven, for it's him that it tastes death and has become the captain of our soul, salvation, for which shame, for which cause I'm not ashamed to call you. Brethren, for in the midst of the church, I will sing unto you. Now that's sing and sing and sing, 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 sing. If you can't understand that, you ought to be in season. Yeah. Amen. Because he's, he's authorized what you need to do. Yeah. And so, Peter, you don't have to sit around and Well, I don't see nothing wrong with it. You have the authorization to do what in the church? Yeah. To sing and make the melody work. Yeah. In your heart, when you start vacillating between whether or not we can move to this, you have to have authorization from God. From Christ yeah. to move pianos and drums and get drums into the worship service of the Lord. Yeah. But not only that, man, man through socialization and culturalism have declared, have decided so many things uh, according to God. God authorized marriage between a man and a woman. Am I right about it? And I don't care how the culture changed, how society said, changed in Matthew chapter 19, the Bible says in this call, a man shall leave his mother and his father. The two shall be no more twin, but they shall be one flesh. Now watch what I'm he said, and what God has authorized. Hold on a minute, Supreme Court. What God has authorized. Somebody say, I know you get mad and you got some gay friends. What God has authorized. But now they let him know me. Somebody ought to be shouting, let no man put us on this. God did authorize a uh, uh, male and male. God authorized a man and a woman. See, that that's authorized. And by him authorized, he don't have to deauthorize a man and a man. I'm judging you only God and say, well, I know you said in Matthew 19, Genesis chapter 2, that male and female, but no dang shit. Those were the old days. And, 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 and so we 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 authorize. We authorize. We went to the Congress. Go ahead, people. Go ahead, people. We went to the Congress. And we went to the Supreme Court. And the court declared that it was time. The Boy Scouts of America to deauthorize and, and, and include things that God didn't authorize. Get from me Romans chapter 1, if you will, and, and stop by about verse number 26 because there's some teaching right there that we need to look at very quickly uh, in God's Word because God, does, God knows what He's doing and He does not need our help to do what He's doing. You, you, you remember what God said uh, over in the book of Romans, am I right about it? Uh, when God was talking to those folk. Who were trying to trying to do some things that he didn't authorize and begin to cause problems and, and there was a, and the sort of, you saw the verse for twenty seven but like what but watch this the Bible says but likewise what happened likewise likewise but hold on like like likewise what also the men also the men leaving the natural use they left the natural use oh, no, no, no. Uh, what's wrong with him <laughs> God authorized a natural process. change marriage because the authorization for marriage has already been given. It's unnatural for a man to cut his eyes at another man or a woman to twirl her hair at another woman. Amen. And sometimes when I'm preaching brother bat his eyes at me I turn on I turn this what? Let it I'm not go. No. Was up there singing, I was preaching in. And that's why I tried to take my wife. She was she like the trap. I traveled out early. So now she wanna go. I just wanna go. I wanna go. Come on, baby, I wanna go. And I like taking my wife with me. Yeah. And we have the time. But but here, here this man was, I won't say his name, but he would get up with the, the praise and he would <laughs> And it sound good. So after I got through preaching, he, brother Pastor, can I can I get you some lunch? 
no, you may not give me no lunch. <laughs> you may go issue work. What you ask me what you want? Well, I look like I don't mean it. Let me get back to my Bible anyway. But, but y'all want to see it. It's he said, likewise, the man left yep. the natural use of the woman. Amen. What else? Burning their love. They were hot. Man with man. Man with man. Working that which is unseemly. Working that which is unseemly. Receiving in themselves. Receiving them the recompense. Read. The recompense of the error. Of the error. Which was meant. Read. And even as they did not like. Even as they, they did not like. Retain God in their knowledge. God gave them over. God to gave them over mind. to a reprobated mind. <laughs> to do that. Do those things which were not convenient. In other words. When you start doing stuff outside of all the races of the authorization of God, uh, whatever it may be, marriage, it may, when you, you know what, you won't have some trouble in marriage, marry somebody about without seeking the will of God. Uh -huh. All hell will break out your man, whether it's homosexual or just a, a heterosexual. If you, when you get, y'all better stop falling in love and getting all good out and running out to the altar, let's get married. You better seek the will of God for that relationship before you get married. Because when you marry outside of his will, you get into a situation that you are left with just you and him without the providential care of God that is going to be hell in that relationship. Amen. What else can you not do without the authorization of God? Well, you can't worship God. You can't worship God. The Bible says in John 4 verse 24 that God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Truth is the authorization of God. You can't worship God without authorization. That means that when God, when there is a, there is a, there is a standard that God says that even gets into the worship. Mark 16 verse number 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. Go back to John 4 by verse 23. For the days will come and I am that God shall seek the true worshiper. What is the true worshiper? The person that comes to me, believing that I am the Son of God, and, and is obedient to the things that I have authorized. And in order to be in Christ, you have to be baptized in the Christ. Mark 6, he said, he that is baptized. Because he said, he that is baptized, he had to talk about folk that is not baptized. Those that are baptized, he says, shall be saved. church, but baptized in the Moses church, you are not saved. Baptized into Elijah's church, you are not saved. But the Hamilton didn't say that. Jesus says that. Because the churches were offered in the text. But God said, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And Jesus commanded water baptism. Amen. 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 He authorized water baptism. He authorized the flow of the service. Acts 20 and verse number 7. The Bible says, Upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, now we just went right past the word the, but in the week, Greek, the word the means upon every first day of the week. Look at that word up when you get to Mata, M A T A. It's a Greek word. That's a powerful little word because it was translated as the, but it means every. What happens when I go to a church that don't commune but on the first Sunday? What does it do to my worship? The first question I gotta ask is, when you have when you have authorization not to commune this Sunday? Where did you get authorization to commune on the pastor? Why did you get authorization to just do it when you feel like doing it? Well, I got authorization first when this chapter 11, about verse 22, when the Bible said, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. But you have a, a you have a command, you have a reference, and you have an example. How often did they commune? Acts 27, 20 and verse 27, upon every first day of the week is the answer to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. So you have the authorization and the designation, and when folk and I worship like God will have them to worship, they are simply not worshiping. This morning, there are folk all around California who call themselves having church. They ain't having church at all. Why? Back to the Bible. I go back to chapter 15 and verse number 9. The Bible says, but in vain do you worship me, teaching for the commandments, the doctrine of men. Whenever you add the authorization of men into the mix with what God has authorized, God said that's vain worship. And you can do nothing in vain and make it on your own. Amen. Is that all right? Is that all right? Praise God.
now so far. We can't sing without proper authorization. We have authorization to sing, not book. We have authorization to marry that cannot be changed. We got authorization to worship, but we have to worship where God has commanded us to pray. Y'all know that in your Bible? Do you not know that the Holy Spirit has to get, gets authorization from heaven before he makes a move? How many of you believe in the Holy Spirit? But do you not know that the Holy Spirit does not speak the things of himself? If the Holy Spirit, part of the God here, will not take it upon his own diagnostic system to do what he want to do, what in the world makes you think you can sit in these pews and do whatever you want to do, however you want to do it? Back to the Bible I go. Oh, I don't have one that doesn't understand what I'm saying. I got one that's good. I wish I had five people for the Holy Ghost right now. Y'all with me? I need five people. Whatever you say, you need to get authorization from God. John 16 and verse number 13. How be it? Now watch this. How be it when he, and that should be a capital H, when he, the Holy Spirit, shall come. Now watch this. 